I'm Brian Woodfield. I'm a professor of chemistry at Brigham Young University, and I'm the creator of Virtual Chem Lab. So the original idea was to create this virtual environment where the focus would become on the thinking side of things, the interpretation, the experimental design, the, the understanding what the results mean, and being able to put students in an environment where they're not constrained. Because students, if they feel artificially constrained, then they're going to think artificially constrained. I needed an environment where a student would be open-ended, where they just feel like there was, there was unlimited possibilities of what they could do. So here's our inorganic lab. So this is the, actually the first lab that we made. Um, so in this one, I would take a test tube, drag it, put it on my holder, and I show a real picture of what's in it, which is empty. I can then take any of these cations, I can add them by clicking any order, any combination that I want, up to 26 of them, and I'm going to show a real picture and show them what's in it. Then I have these lab manipulations. I can centrifuge it. I can do a flame test. So we show a real flame test here, or a flame test with a cobalt filter. I can, I can decant it. I can divide. I can heat it up. I can measure the pH of the solution, pH of the vapor. I can smell it with my nose. I can stir it. And I can add any of these 11 reagents, any order, any combination that I want. And we're going to show you the real outcomes. So here's an example of what I could do. I could add, go to pH 7, or I could go to pH 10, and I show a real picture. Everything here precipitates out. I could go to sodium hydroxide. Now my chromium is in solution because it's amphoteric. I can centrifuge that. Then I could decant. Um, and um, now I have my chromium. Notice that I added sodium because I added sodium hydroxide. So sodium is there. So if I were some unsuspecting student were to add it and then decide to do a flame test, you know, they would just see the sodium flame masking everything. All right. So here's titration experiments, beakers and pipettes and and pH meters, conductivity meters. We have a stock room full of acids and bases, monoprotic, diprotic, triprotic. Again, you can do presets. So here's a preset, weak acid, strong base, titration, go and do it. Save this data to the lab book. So I can save this data, I can save this graph. They can see, monitor the reaction, we have indicators. We have barometric pressure for the day so that when they weigh something, they can do buoyancy corrections. So lots of different things, calorimetry, gas properties as well. So this is kind of how they all work. This is a general chemistry lab, kind of focusing on what we typically teach in different levels of general chemistry. Our experience is, is just get the students to do things instead of to listen to things and just let them do this work. It doesn't matter if they even get correct results. Ex exposing them to a virtual environment where they have to think, you're going to win. Your students are going to think differently, and they're going to be more engaged in the subject.